so hello my dear students and learners so today we are going to discuss a very important topic in the data structures and algorithm course and the name of the topic is introduction to arrays now before going to the detailed discussion of array now we need to know that why should we use array what is the requirement of an array so before going to this array i want to show you something so please look at the board so first i am declaring an integer variable a where i am assigning a value 10 okay now immediately after executing this line by the c compiler what will happen the compiler will take exactly three actions one after another so first the compiler will check that it is an integer variable so if you are dealing with a 32 bit compiler so integer will takes four bytes of memory so first it will take suppose the memory allocation is starting from 1000 to 1 so it will in fact 1004 so the compiler will first allocates four bytes of memory okay then what will happen then the compiler will associate this address with the variable a that means this is the address of a okay now finally the compiler in third steps it will assign the value 10 to this location okay so this three action will be taken exactly one after another by the c compiler now what will happen if we write the next line that a is equals to 20 so after executing this line by the compiler the previous value of a that was 10 will now be overridden by the new value 20 so 10 value will be overridden by the 20 and that is the main drawback of a variable because the variable a is unable to store both the values 10 and 20 simultaneously it is capable to store a single value and that is the main drawback main fit for of a variable now suppose if we want to find out the average marks obtained by a particular class by the students of a particular class for a particular subject and the students suppose there are 50 students are there in the class so since a variable is capable to store a single value so if we want to store the 50 students marks so we need to declare 50 different variable first because a single variable is capable to store a single value now after declaring this 50 variables then we have to store 50 different values and then you have to manage it so declaring the 50 different variables it is a very time consuming job it is a very tedious job and not only that it is also a very error prone job so that's why to overcome this limitation of variable we had to think of about a solution that under a single variable name how can you store more than one value at a time okay and that's why the array has come okay now we'll try to understand that what is an array so what is the definition of an array the array definition is an array is nothing but a fixed size it is a collection of homogeneous type of elements collection of similar type of elements which are stored in contiguous memory locations so in an array under a single variable name we can store more than one value at a time so okay so array is a fixed size collection of homogeneous elements which are stored in contiguous memory location okay now the next point is what are the types of array now so array can be broadly classified into three different categories the number one is one one dimensional array in short form sometimes it is to also called as 1d array okay the next one is two dimensional array sometimes it is also called as 2d array and the last one is multi dimensional array okay so now we are going to be familiar with each and every array one by one so before that we have to know that how to declare an array so next point is declaration of an array okay now 
declaration of 1D array. So, how 1D array can be declared? So, first we have to mention the data type, then the name of the array, and then the size of the array. So, here I have declared an integer array A, which size is 5. That means the integer array A is capable to store 5 values, and all the values will be of integer type. Okay, we can only store integer values. So, that's why it is its data type is integer. So, this is the data type of the array. This is the data type of the stored values. Now, this A is the name of the array. This is the name of the array. And this 5 is the size of the array. Size of the array. Okay. So, this is the declaration of an one-dimensional array. Now, if you want to declare a 2D array, then you have to declare it like that. Int A 3 4. So here, the name of the array is A, where we are mentioning two different dimension. The first dimension is 3 and the second dimension is 4. So you can check that in this square bracket, we are mentioning the size. So if in any place in the program, this square bracket is used, that means we are using an array. So in, for a single dimensional array, we have used a single square bracket and inside this square bracket we have mentioned a single dimension that's why it is a single dimension array this is 1d array and in case of 2d array since two dimension is involved here so two different dimension needs to be mentioned in two different square bracket so the first dimension is for row size and the second dimension is for column size okay so this 2d array will contain 3 into 4, that is 12 element as a whole. Okay, there will be 3 rows and each and every row, there will be 4 elements. So, 3 into 4, 12 elements will be there. So, we will have a detailed discussion later on about 2D arrays. And, and the next one is multidimensional array. Now, how to declare a multidimensional array? For example, int a 2, then 3, then 4. So, here you can check that this multidimensional array, we have mentioned more than two dimension. So, this multidimension is nothing but a collection of two 2D arrays. Okay, and each of this 2D array containing three rows and four columns. So, as a whole, this multidimensional array or 3D array, 3 dimension has been mentioned, will contain 2, 3, 6 and 6, 4, 24 elements. Okay. So, this, this is the simple declaration statement of array. Now, next we will check what is the memory representation of an array. So, next point is memory representation. Okay. So let's have the previous example. We had declared an integer array in day 5. So we have declared a one dimensional 1D integer array and the size of this array is 5. Now when this statement will be executed by the C compiler, immediately after that the C compiler will allocate memory. So whenever you are declaring an array, it is mandatory to declare its size because if the size is not mentioned, the the respective memory cannot be allocated by the compiler. So it is mandatory to mention the size when you are declaring an array. So now we'll draw the memory map for this one dimensional array. So here the size of the array is 5. So if we are, suppose the integer is taking 4 bytes of memory in a 32 bit compiler. If you are dealing with 16 bit compiler, then it will take 2 bytes of memory. So if integer takes 4 bytes of memory, then it will take 20 bytes that means 4, 5 to 20 bytes memory as a whole for this 1D array. And I have already told you that, that array elements are always stored in contiguous memory location. That means this 
20 bytes will be in a contiguous location okay in consecutive manner and the name of the array is a okay now suppose the allocation is starting from 1000 to 1 so it will end at 1020 okay now each and every element will take four bytes of memory so the first element will take first four bytes that is 1001 to 1004 then the second element will take 1005 to 1008 the third element will take 1009 to 1012 the fourth element will take 1013 to 1016 and the final element that is the fifth element will take 1017 to 1020 so each and every element will take four bytes of memory so this array as a whole will take 20 bytes of memory now whenever we are dealing with an array only the array name will not be sufficient to access the element so if we want to access the element apart from this array name another integer constant you have to use that is called index integer variable you have to use or it is called subscript and array index and subscripts always start from index 0 okay whatever be the dimension of the array whatever be the size of the array if there is a single element the allocation will start from index 0 and if it, you are dealing with 100 elements or 200 elements even after the index will always start from 0 and what will be the last index since the index is starting from 0 so the last index will be size minus 1 here the size of this array is 5 so the last index will be 5 minus 1 that is 4 so the index of the second element will be 1 2 3 4 and so on so these are the index it is also called as subscript that's why array is also called subscripted variable so along with the array name and this index value we can fetch the elements we can track the element okay now suppose we want to initialize the value okay so how can you initialize it initialization of an array okay that means how to initialize with some values how can you store some values into this array now whenever we are declaring the it can be done in actually two way so the first one is whenever we are declaring the array at the same time we can mention the array elements okay so five element five size the size is five here so we cannot store more than five elements so max to max we can store five elements we can store fewer number of elements but number of elements must not be greater than five so suppose you are mentioning five values here so the values are 5 10 20 okay 25 and 30 so i have taken some arbitrary elements and all the elements you can see are integer type well. so these elements will be stored starting from index 0 so at index 0 the first value 5 then 10 then 20 then 25 and the last value will be stored in the last index of this array okay so this will be the initialization okay now here if we want to access the elements so what will be the first element of this array the first element is equals to a of 0 okay so whenever we are accessing any elements of an array first you have to mention the name of the array along with the since we are dealing with a single dimensional array single dimension is there so the index value you have to mention inside the third bracket so a0 means we want to have the value present at index 0 so here a0 means it is 5 so the first element is 5 so the second element of the array will be a1 okay and it is nothing but 10 similarly if we want to fetch the last element of this array so you have to mention the index of the last element and index of the last element means it is a4 and a4 means it is nothing but 30 so this way we can access the elements of an array so this is one type of initialization now another type of initialization is that we will not mention the value directly rather we will ask the user to scan the value from the keyboard so for that purpose you have to execute a loop okay suppose this is the loop variable i okay which will track the index okay so the index is starting from 0 so you have to initialize the i by 0 so int i is equals to 0 and we have to go to the last index last index means it is 4 so we will write i less than 5 less than 5 means i will take the last value 4 and we have to increment the i by 1 because first we will track 
the value at 0 then we will initialize the value present at index 1 so 0 1 2 3 so you have to increment the index by 1 so here we are tracking the index by the variable i okay so now we want to scan the value so integer value we want to scan so you have to use the format principle percentage of d so this is the format principle for integer and then we have to scan the value that means we have to use the address of operator and we have to mention the element so here a i that means the first element will be scanned the first element what is i value is 0 so a 0 will be scanned first that means whatever value will be taken from the keyboard so this value a 0 will be stored at index 0 similarly i will iterate for the value of i equals to 0 1 2 3 4 so in this way it will take five values and it will store in the contiguous memory locations okay starting from index 0 to index 4 so this way also we can take the values from the keyboard so this is another way of initialization okay so today i have given you some basics idea about the array how to declare an array how to um, uh, initialize an array what is the memory map of an array and what are the different types of an array okay so in from in my, my upcoming videos i am going to discuss each and every operation that we have mentioned for data structure that means traversing a data structure insertion and deletion all the operations we are going to perform through the help of an array so my dear students i hope this is a uh, clearly understood these topics. Thanks for watching. Please take care. Have a nice day.